Okay, question number nine from the practice paper B of Pure Mathematics 2 um, for the international A-level. Um, I compiled this paper from mainly C2, June 2018, the GCE paper. Okay, and a few questions I took from the C1 paper and I put them together so that it will make like an, a P2 paper. Okay. And this is actually question nine also from that paper, just in case you got here following the link for that. Now, here it says the figure three shows a sketch of a part of the curve with equation y equals 7x squared times 5 minus 2 root x, where x is greater than or equal to zero. Okay. The curve has a turning point at the point A. It turns at the point A. And... Uh, where x is greater than 0, as shown in figure 3, using calculus, calculus, find the coordinates of the point A. So we've got to find the coordinates of the turning point A. Okay, so we have the equation of the curve here. And we have to, we have to what we know is that at the turning point, okay, at the turning point, the gradient of the curve is 0. Okay, the, the gradient of the curve is 0. Okay, the gradient is equal to zero. Okay, so and the turning point is this line is has a this line is basically where this where this gradient where this curve turns and this line has a gradient of zero. So the tangent to the curve there will be zero, the gradient is zero. It's going increasing, 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 becomes zero, then it becomes decreasing, gradient becomes negative. So that's where the gradient is zero. Okay. So that means okay, that means dy dx for this function that we got here has to be zero at a at turning point at a okay the gradient must be zero so now let's take this and differentiate it so first of all let's write it out in a way that we can um, differentiate easily so i'm going to multiply the brackets out so 7x squared times 5 that's 35x squared 7x squared times minus 2 times root x well that's minus 14 and then you got x squared times root x, which means x squared times x to the power of a half, which means x to the power of 5 over 2. So 14x to the power of 5 over 2. Okay, that is this expression expanded. So we want to find dy dx, so we have to differentiate this function. So this will give you 70x minus you've got 5 over 2 times 14 okay that gives you 5 7 is a 35 so that's 35 x so we multiply by the power and we take one from the power so 5 over 2 minus 1 is 5 over 2 minus 2 over 2 okay which is 3 over 2 okay so that's differentiated so as we said the gradient is 0 so dy dx is 0 so we can say 70 x minus 35 x to the power of 3 over 2 has to equal 0. We can get rid of this big numbers. We can see that both of these terms are divisible by 35. That goes into 70 twice. So 2x minus x to the power of 3 over 2 equals 0. Now to solve something like this, the easiest way to do it is to basically, uh, if you have a 0 on one side, is just take one of them to the other side. So you can say 2x is equal to x to the power of 3 over 2 and then deal with it okay if there was another term here like a 1 or a 2 it wasn't 0 then there's other ways using some sort of substitution that we need to do to deal with it but in this case we don't have to do that okay. if there was another term there then you couldn't do what we're doing now it would be difficult all right so you have to then say let, let for example y equals x to the power of uh, uh, half equals for example y so this will be y cubed and that will be y squared and so on and then you could carry on but we don't need to do that here we could do it there but we don't need to because we have a zero so when we put it on the other side we can do stuff to both sides no problem without any worried worries because you just have one single term on each side so now what i'm going to do here is i'm going to square both sides because i want to get rid of this this half power right three three over two this is like square root isn't it so i want to get rid of the square root so i'm going to square both sides so i'm going to get four x squared 
equals, and if I square this side, it's basically multiplying the powers with each other, isn't it? 3 over 2 times 2 gives you 3, so that's going to be x cubed. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do something, even though we don't really need to do this because uh, we know we're only looking for the one x value which is bigger than 0, Okay, I'm going to show you that really you should do what I'm going to do next. You can bring everything back to one side, so I'll bring it to this side, no problem. 4x cubed minus x, 4x squared minus x cubed equals 0. I'll take out the common factor which is x squared. I've got 4 minus x equals 0. And then I'll say either x squared equals 0 or x equals 4. So this is one solution, x equals 0, twice. Okay, meaning that's where it turns. You see, it turns there. Okay, that's the turning point. Okay, so x equals zero. I don't have to worry, really worry too much about that. But then we can also say x equals four. Okay, so it turns there, x equals zero. Okay, so it actually would turn there. It can't go further than that because x has to be greater than or equal to zero. It can't be less than zero. At zero, it's going to have a gradient which is negative. But because they said we're looking for a and a is greater than zero, Okay, we don't have to worry about that zero point. We can just look at x equals 4. So we know that this must be the solution. And the question asks us to write down the coordinates of a. So you can't just write down 4. You have to find out what y is. So the coordinates of a will therefore be 4 and something. Okay, how do we find that something? Well, we put 4 back into the original equation. Okay, so we can say when x equals 4 y is going to be 7 times 4 squared times 5 minus 2 times root 4. So that's going to be 5 to minus 4. That's going to be 1. So you've got 16 times 7. So y is going to be 16 times 7. Let me just write it here. y is 16 times 7. Okay, which is going to be 10 plus 42. Uh, sorry, 70 plus 42, 112, just to make sure, 70, 16 times 7, 112. Okay, so that's 112, so I know that the coordinates of A are 4 and 112. And we have part A done. Let's move on to part B. The curve crosses the x-axis at the point B as shown in figure 3. So if we go back here, we can see that it crosses the x-axis at point B. Okay, so basically at B, okay, the coordinate x coordinate of point B, okay, we know that at B, okay, the y coordinate is 0. If the y coordinate is 0, that means that's where this hits 0. So 7x squared times 5 minus 2 root x is equal to 0. So I need to solve this equation. So I've either got either 7x squared equals 0, in which case x equals 0 twice, or 5 minus 2 root x equals 0. And again, because it says it equals 0 here, it's easy for us to solve this without any difficulty. So 5 is equal to 2 root x. So we can say root x is equal to 5 over 2. Um, 5 over 2, that's right. And if we want to find what x is, we have to square both sides. So it's going to be 5 over 2 squared, which gives me x equals 25 over 4. There's my answer. You can say that's 6 and a quarter if you want, but that's fine. That's fine as your answer. x equals 25 over 4. They didn't ask us to put a coordinate form. They said just the x coordinate of the point b. So it's 20. if they said find the coordinates of b, I'd put 25 over 4, 0. It just wants the x coordinate. So that's fine as our answer. And we've got part C. Use integration to find the area. So the finite region R, shown in the, in the, in the figure, th in figure 3, is bounded by the curve. Okay, the curve. Okay. And, well, actually, this, I put it in myself. Let me just do that. Let me just get rid of it for now. Okay. So the finite region R, shown in figure 3, is bounded by the curve through a and the line through a parallel to the x-axis okay so that line because remember a had the coordinates 4 and 112 and b that was six and a quarter and zero so this line must be y equals 112 
okay, and the line through B parallel to the y-axis. This is going straight up, so this line must be y equals six and a quarter, which was twenty-five over four. All right, this is the point one hundred and twelve, and then we know that the point A is four and one hundred twelve. So this must be four over here. Okay, so we want to use integration to find the area of this region R. Now there's two ways we could do it. One way would be to find the area between four and six and a quarter under the curve. Okay, so you'd take the equation and you'd integrate it between four and six and a quarter, and that would give you this area. And then to find the area we want, we could find the area of this rectangle, which is 112 times, that's uh, two and a quarter, 112 times 2 and a quarter, subtract the area that we found, and it will give us this region R. That's one way, and it's perfectly fine to do it that way. Okay, um, another way we could do it would be to do the following. Let me just get rid of these. Um, I, I know that the area I want is the area that is enclosed between this line, y equals 112, and this curve, okay, um, y equals this between the limits okay of four and six and a quarter is the area between the line and the curve in this region here okay all right so it's it's if we subtract the area so if we subtract the two equations y equals 112 and y equals 7x squared my, times 5 minus 2 root x from each other um, and integrate that expression I get between these two values, it should give me the area between those two in that region. So basically what I'm saying is the area is going to be the integral between uh, 4 and 6 and a quarter. So that's 4 and, let's keep it as 25 over 4. Okay, and you're going to have the line, which is 112, minus the curve, okay, which is, let's keep this a square bracket, which is, um, 35 x squared minus and it was seven, oh, yeah it was minus 14 and it was x to the power of that's 5 over 2 wasn't it 5 over 2 okay and all of that integrated with respect to x okay so let me just um, just simplify it a little bit before we integrate so that's between the 4 and 25 over 4 and you're going to have 112 minus 35 x squared and plus 14 x to the power of 5 over 2 and integrated with respect to x. So we need to integrate that with respect to x. We've got it ready to start integrating. So now we can say the area will be. Now once we're going to start integrating, we change the integral sign for a square bracket. So we're going to have to add x to this, so 112 x. Going to add a, you're going to add 1 to the power, so 35x cubed over 3. I'm going to have to add 1 to this power, so it's going to be plus 14x. Now, if you add 1 to 5 over 2, you're going to get 7 over 2, because you're adding 2 over 2, which is 1. Divided by, oh, I'm going to leave some space here to make it clearer. Okay, so 14x to the power of 7 over 2 okay and that's divided by 7 over 2 which is the same as multiplied by 2 over 7 when you divide by a fraction you are multiplying by its reciprocal so that's between the limits of 4 and 25 over 4 so now we have integrated it this cancels with this that's going to give you 2 so that will be 4 here so you're going to end up with substituting the values in of 25 over 4 first and then 4. So you have 112 times 25 over 4 minus 35 over 3 times 25 over 4 which is going to be cubed plus and you're going to have 2 times 2 is 4 and then you're going to have 25 over 4 to the power of 7 over 2. So that's the first part. And you're going to take away from that when you put 4 into this. You have 112 times 4 minus 35 over 3 
times 4 cubed um, plus 4 times sorry it's 4 yeah this is 4 let me write it over here 4 x to the power of 7 over 2 so 4 times um, 4 to the power of 7 over 2 okay 4 times 4 to the power of 7 over 2 okay so now we can start simplifying that so I'm just going to use the calculator for all of this so we have 112 times the long-winded question isn't it times 25 over 4 it's a bit of a nasty question for the last question because a lot of stuff to do here okay minus you got 35 over 3 times 25 over 4 and that has to be cubed okay and then we got plus 4 times 25 over 4 and that's going to be raised to the power of a fraction 7 over 2 which is the square root of these things raised to the power of 7 okay that gives us this value I'm just going to put, put the answer straight away so that value minus and I'm going to put all of this in my calculator 112 times 4 minus 35 over 3 times 4 cubed okay plus 4 times 4 times sorry uh, yeah 4 to the power of fraction 7 over 2 Okay, do I have to put this in a bracket? I think I do. Close the bracket. Okay. And that gives us 79.7656. So the area is 79.7, what was it? 7656. 79.7656. And the question tells us to give the area, sorry, to give the answer, come on, to two decimal places. Okay, so we need to give our final answer to two decimal places. So say area is equal to 79.77 square units. And there we have the answer. To that question. Now the last part of this question, which is about gradient function, is actually added to this question. It wasn't there in the beginning. Okay, I added it to this question right at the end um, out of just trying to give you something that is new from the new syllabus. So as you can see, okay, from the wording it's like a different type of font. I tried to my best to make it the same, but it came out darker as well. So this is a question which I made up myself and I'm going to answer this question on the next video because it's went on for too long and also I'm going to add some more questions about gradient functions to that just as a last minute thing to help students who are struggling with this.